Okay, it's a parable, but only those with ears to hear are supposed to hear this. It's not going to make any sense to anybody else. And what did we teach in the Do You Know the Father and the Son series? We taught that it's the Father and the Son that have to give you the ears to hear, the eyes to see, the heart to receive. So when he's saying, he who has ears to hear, let him hear, he's saying, those of you who I gave ears to hear, listen up. This isn't for everybody. At every, you know, not everything is for everybody at every minute of the time. There's different timing for everybody in, in, in the history of the world. Everybody's got their own particular timing. He's saying, for you, who in this timing I've given ears to hear, pay attention. He's saying, look, if you are possessing, now we're talking about not hearing. He didn't say, for whoever hears, to him more shall be given from to hear. He says, whoever possesses. So now you need to take ownership of what's been said and make it a part of who you are and start applying it. And if you possess it and use it, he'll give you more. If you don't possess it and make use of it, even what you have, it'll take away. Wow. These are keys to the kingdom. These are secrets of the kingdom. This is really critical, and it's going to be important in future teachings that we understand how Scripture is written. The Bible is written where you will have something said, and then you may have it said again with slight changes. That's not adding or taking away. It's actually deepening the layers of understanding of what's trying to be said. So in the initially it said, seeing you don't see, hearing you don't hear. And now he's saying, hearing you don't understand, seeing you don't perceive. So now we understand what Yeshua was talking about. So when Yeshua says, seeing you don't see, he's saying, oh, seeing you don't perceive. In other words, you're seeing without understanding. You're seeing without perception. You're seeing it, but you don't know what to do with it. Hearing without understanding. So you heard it, but again, you don't understand it. You don't know what to do with it. So Isaiah is saying the exact same thing with slightly different words, but those slightly different words doesn't change anything. It deepens the understanding. It clarifies at an additional level. They are choosing to filter stuff out. Okay, they're choosing not to hear They've hardened their hearing. All of you have, who have children or have dealt with children and they're watching a, a TV show or movie or they're playing a video game, you could say anything and they're not going to hear it until you say something like ice cream. All of a sudden they heard that, right? But if you say homework or they, they can't hear any of that because they're selectively filtering. So they are able to hear. And you test them and see, you know, you'll say, Listen, you got to put that away now and get to your homework. And they didn't hear a word. Say, by the way, do you want some ice cream? What? All of a sudden, whoa, hey, ice cream? So their hearing is not the problem. <laughs> the thickening is filtering. Let's change that to filtering. They have filtered their hearing. And they've closed their eyes, meaning they've chosen to ignore. When they, that's an idiomatic phrase to choosing to ignore what you see. Closing your eyes to a situation. Or you have persecution where friends and family members now tell you that you're lost because you're doing all of this stuff. See, that's the craziest thing on the whole planet that I've ever heard, ever. You're lost because you're trying to obey what was said in the Bible. I cannot make that connection. I can't, you know. Okay, so you do know that that stuff's in the Old Testament. Yes, I do. Okay, so and I'm trying to do it, so that makes me lost. Yes, you are. Okay. <laughs> Okay. This is those, you know, when it talks about strong delusion and everything else, this is where the Bible proves itself true. I mean, you can't get this kind of, this is like crazy talk. It makes no sense. I mean, I can understand why they don't want to do it, and I can understand why they've been convinced not to do it, but to tell me I'm lost because I'm doing it, just is like, <laughs> that's like totally insane. It just makes no sense. Okay. Because you will hear preachers tomorrow, if you go and listen, who will tell you that trying to keep the commandments is not only done away with, now it's actually wrong to do. They've shifted. It used to be just, well, it was nailed to the cross and it's done away with and all the blah, blah, blah. All right. Now they've shifted to it's actually wrong. And they'll tell you that you're making a mockery of Messiah by doing it. No, you make a mockery by not doing it. It says they have no root in themselves. What's a root in yourself? Meaning... I believe this is right. I embrace it. It's part of me. I put, you know what? You guess that's what he says here about possessing. Whoever possesses has a root in himself. 
Connect that dot. If you possess, then you have the root in yourself. If you don't possess, then you're getting it from someone else who possesses. Now you're doing it sort of third party and sort of vicariously. Then it's easy to blow you out. So I'm glad I, I didn't like jump away from this verse that we kind of covered that. So understand that you want to make sure that you have a root in yourself. That means you have chosen and sold out and bought in and, and given, you know, died to self and everything, that you are all in. That's the root in yourself. You're not still kind of keeping a little foot out there and big toe and whatever, just in case I need to go back over there. No, either you're in or you're out. There's no part way. So back to the verse, it says, look, the worry of this age and the deceit of riches. So he's connecting the worry and deceit of it. So this age that we live in is focused on fear of provision, fear of lack. Oh, but you guys don't tithe. Not always, not fully, or you don't give offerings. Why? Because you're afraid of the lack. Well, maybe the reason you have the lack is you're not trusting him. Not just maybe, it probably is. He tells you, put me first and you'll never need anything. But I can promise you, in this room, no matter which, where this room is, all around the world, if there's a room full of people, the room is not all tithing. The room is not all doing what they're supposed to do financially. They're just not. And so, when you look at your bank account, just like I said, you know, it teaches you, when you look at the mirror, well, the bank account's a mirror of whether or not you're doing what you need to do properly with your finances. When you look at your bank account, your bank account's not right, there are probably two problems. One is you don't spend right, and the other is you're not giving out to the creator like you're supposed to. I'm just stating the facts. You don't have to believe me. The word says it. A lot of the people that are going to watch this on YouTube, whatever, are, are not part of our ministry, so it has to do with whoever they are. But this is about you. Remember, my job is to help you get safely and successfully from where you are into the kingdom. That's my job as a shepherd to help you go from where you are safely into the kingdom. And part of that is that you should not be suffering and impoverished and stressed all the time because you can't pay your bills. And by the way, the connection was to we need to overcome the world. Well, what did it talk about in verse 21 and 22? It talks about the things from the world. Pressure from the world, persecution from the world, the worries of this age or the world, the deceit of riches, which really comes from the world. It's a mindset. Because the whole point of going into this parable is that we have to overcome the world. Because it's all the world that's happening in the first three we looked at getting us to the fertile ground. The world is getting in the way with the seed bearing good fruit and getting good roots in the first three levels of this parable. There's four different levels. So there's by the wayside, by the rocky, okay? And this is the thorns. And so on all of those, it's a world problem. You are too involved or you're allowing the world to intervene even if you're not involved, but you're letting it infringe in your world. It's, over, it's, it's trespassing into the where that, what's, what's of him. And that's a word Abba likes to use, don't trespass. So you're allowing the world to trespass on his stuff, on areas of your life that really should not be allowed to be trespassed on. That's about him. When what you want and what he wants clash, do you sacrifice what you want for what he wants? Because after all, that's, that's your... Re <laughs> I love the wording. It's reasonable. He thinks it's very reasonable for you to do that. He didn't say it's thou shalt and must. He said... That's just the reasonable thing to do. For all the things he gives you, for all the stuff he does for you, the most reasonable thing in his mind is that you would give yourself a living sacrifice to him. I mean, that's just the reasonable thing to do. Don't think you're so smart. Don't think you know more than everybody. Don't look down on people. Don't think you've arrived. This is why I tell people, stop posting all those posts attacking Christmas and Easter and da 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 don't attack, because then you're doing this. You think you're, you're thinking more highly of you, thinking yourself as higher than them. But you were them. There's very few of you that were raised in this, so almost all of you were them. And what does Yahweh say over and over again? Don't forget you were slaves in Egypt. In other words, remember where you came from. Whatever you're having a deal with, you were them. See, don't think more highly of yourself than other people. 
You know, we should have Messianics Anonymous where we say, hi, my name is Steve, and I don't know as much as I think I know. Now, a prophet may tell you, if you do this, this is going to happen. Well, that's speaking the word. And he says, and when you do that, this is going to happen. That's speaking the word. He's not predicting your future. He's simply letting you know the cause and effect. That's the word of Yahweh. He says, there's cause and effect here. It's not like saying, for no reason in your life, I see a man in your future, and I, or I see a great job. But there's no reason to see that. A prophet's going to say, if you do this, this, and this, this is what your future's going to look like. If you do this, this, and this, this is what your future's going to look like. That's different than just these mirrored ball people. You understand what I'm saying? Or tea leaves and cards or whatever. Because they're going to give you something they say they see for no reason. They just say they see it. Emunah means, I can give you a definition of emunah. It means a complete and full understanding, belief, and trust that everything that happens is under the authority and control of the creator of the universe. Everything that happens, he either allowed it or he caused it to happen. I fully believe, trust, and know that that's a fact. That's emunah. And I walk and live my life in that understanding. Because my actions prove that I totally believe that he has everything under authority and under control. That's emunah.